So this will be tutorial number three in the VU22339 unit, unit of work. And if we scroll down to the, to the task that is required on element two, so this is element 2.2, it's requiring us to 3D model a center punch and to complete a 2D drawing for that center punch. Now, finer dimensions are outlined in the learner resource book for this unit in appendix two. Okay, so I've got Fusion 360 open and I have modeled this once before on my YouTube channel, but that was a long time ago and I was relatively new to Fusion. I think I can do it better this time. Now, I've got my practice piece that I've done here earlier. And to give you a bit of a look now, what this will cover, really what we're looking at in this tutorial is looking at the revolve cut feature and also learning to apply a few more constraints and moving further with our 2D drawing, especially in the title block and showing you an easier way of filling out that title block. Now, if you look down in the timeline how I've done this today, you can see it's a, it's a sketch and then a sketch revolve cut, okay? Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is save our design and we're going to call this center punch. Now, just like everything we do in our class, in our course, uh, you are 3D modeling and 2D drawing because you are going to go into the workshop and you're going to make this on the lathe. Okay, and this forms part of your machining unit. So I've clicked save and we can start modeling. So we're in the modeling works, the solid modeling workspace, as you can see here create a sketch. This time I want to click the blue green plane, which is this side plane here. Okay, create a polygon, circumscribe polygon. Remember to always snap at the origin and drag out sideways to the right. Don't go diagonally, go sideways and make sure it says six sides. Okay, and terminate. We want to dimension that now. Remember the shortcut key is D on the keyboard for dimension. We click that side first, let go of the mouse, that side second, drag up, and we're going to type in 12 mil because the material you are using today is going to be 12 mil hex. We drag that dimension down to make it look neater, and then we can click the fit button here. All right. So down here, I want you to make sure that you have fit selected. The shortcut key is F6. Additionally, in our grid, we need snap to grid turned on as well, okay? So grid section there, snap to grid is turned on. So ensure you've got that, otherwise it's gonna be a little bit challenging for you to do this tutorial. We now have our sketch exactly how I want it. Let's extrude it, okay? Finish sketch, E for extrude. And I'm gonna come into my home view here. I'm gonna type, just start to pull it, and then type in 100, enter and fit it back on the screen. So there's our basic start. And this is how your blank will look when you get it before you machine it. Okay, we need to create a sketch here now. And you'll notice here, if I just pan this over for you, I want to pick this side plane here, the blue red plane. And when I click that, it will come onto this frontal view for me. Now this will allow me to start sketching some profiles to apply the revolve cut. So what I like to do here is just draw a rectangle. So R key for rectangle, just draw a rectangle. And this will be um, five, tab and 10. Okay, enter, all right. Now to get this in the orientation where we want it, I'm gonna teach you a constraint. So we go up here to constraints and this will be a collinear constraint. I click that, I'm gonna pick this line here. See that vertical line there? Then I'm going to click that line and that will bring my object here over here in line now. See that? Now we're going to put a, a constraint from the origin point to that point there. D for dimension. I can click that point and click that point and drag out. Now that measurement there has to be five. All right. So when that profile cuts, I'm going to be left with a diameter of 10. Okay. Now this one's going to be a little bit challenging, but just follow along. It's quite easy to do. We're gonna draw a series of sketches, okay, of, of just straight lines, okay? So I'm just gonna snap here and go vertically. Then I'm gonna go out to the side. Okay, then I'm gonna come straight down here on an angle, another angle down to that point there, okay? Now the first dimension we wanna put in is this one here and that's gonna be 60. Okay, the second one we put in over here is there, and that's going to be 15. Remember, use your D key on the keyboard for dimensioning. 
we need to put a height of this point here to that point. So watch where I'm selecting, D key, that point, that point, and drag over. If I go angrily, see how it all keeps changing? I want to drag over here. I'm going to type in 2.5. Okay, now I need an angular dimension, so I need to click that line and that line. So watch again, D for dimension, that line, that line, and type in 6. Okay, just to check all those. So 60, 6 degrees, 15, and 2.5. Okay, so we've got one more to do here. Now watch this, if I drag this out a bit here, I need to put 45 degrees on there. So there to there. Okay, that'll be 45. Okay, so now I've got my cutting sketch. All right, now if I drag that around, see how it stays as one, it doesn't go all uh, funny looking on me, all right? We're gonna use that collinear one again. So up here in constraints, collinear constraint, that line first, that line second, and notice now that I can drag that in here. Now what I'm going to do here is grab that point and just drag down and watch it snap to the midpoint. You'll see a funny triangle appear. Once that triangle appears, my entire sketch will turn black. That sketch is now fully defined. Okay, finish sketch. Come up here to our home view. We're going to apply a revolve cut. So create, revolve. We want to pick two profiles. So in the profile section here, Profile section first, we're going to pick that profile and that profile. In the axes, we click axes, we come over to our origin and we click X axes. All right. You'll notice now that it's applied the revolve cut feature and it's just like it's been in a lathe and you've turned that down. That's exactly how your cutting tool will complete the model today. We need to click save. And now we're going to apply an appearance. So the shortcut key for appearance is A. A for appearance. We're going to type in here nickel, N-I-C-K-E-L. And we're going to satin nickel. And if you haven't got that, you can download that. There should be a button here if you haven't got it. I think you should have in the default setting. And drag that on. And there's our coated part. And we can save that now. Now that's quite easy, wasn't it? Okay, now we've still got to do one more little thing. We've got to put a, a chamfer on that edge there. So we come up to modify, chamfer, click that edge, and we just want 0.5, and we're just gonna touch that with a carbide tool and just take that sharp corner off, okay, on the machines later. So we can save that now. There's our model done. If you look in the timeline, I've got a sketch, extrusion, sketch, revolve cut, chamfer, all right? Let's move into the 2D drawing space. Right click on here, create a drawing. ISO A3, click OK. Okay, my drawings window has now opened. I can now start placing my base view there. And we're just gonna have it one to one and we're gonna have the hidden visible edges turned on and click OK, and there it is there. Let's bring in the projected views now, the third angle projected view. So click Create, Projected View. This is quite simple. Click it once, go out to the right. Go back to the middle, go vertical. Go out on a diagonal ang angle and click up here. Click OK, all right? Now, like I was teaching you in the previous tutorials, nine times out of 10, our little isometric view up the top right-hand corner would usually be half scale. Um, look, and nine times out of 10, I would do that. However, it's we've got so much real estate here, I think keeping it one-to-one -one isn't gonna detract from the drawing at all, okay? And it gives the reader or the person on the workshop floor an idea what it is they're trying to build, okay? Or what they're trying to make today. Okay, yesterday, I'm gonna teach you a shortcut now. No more of this filling in the title block. I'm gonna zoom in here, okay? I'm gonna draw a marquee over my title block and click it here. Now, if I double click my title block, Ah, uh, it's a little cheat section, okay? Now, I made you do the hard yard yesterday, cap locks on. We can do that all in one uh, thing here now, okay? We'll just put here scale one to one. We can approve by up here. Just put your teacher's name. Okay, date of issue will be today's date, which is the 1st of September, 0109, 2021. 
If you're in America, you probably switch those around. And approve status, document status. Look, that's good enough. That's all I want in there today. Um, all right. You might want to put some detail about what, how you want to make that, uh, what material you want to make that from. And up here, you can see in our appendix, we've stated that it should be uh, 12 millimeter steel hex. We can click the zoom to fit button and fit everything in here. Okay, let's put some dimensions on here. So what I'd like to do with this front view here, I'm going to zoom in for you to make it a bit easier. Draw a marquee, click it. We're going to put a center line right across the middle. So center line, I'm up here, geometry, center line. I'm going to click the top edge, that edge, okay? Then I'm going to press the escape key to get out of it. I'm going to click on the center line and just extend that slightly past, okay? So our center line is done. Sometimes it might say reassociate, okay? And I'll just reassociate that again because it may have lost, when I dragged it, it may have upset it. Notice now that it's reassociated, that's fine. Okay, let's put some smart dimensions on this. And we want to put a dimension from that angle to that angle there and drag out. That should be a 90 degree. Most center points, are, uh, center punches are ground to 90 degrees. If you're using a prick punch for marking out, uh, they're usually around 60 degrees, okay? So we need another angle from here to there, and we're gonna drag that out to about there. Okay, I think that looks good now. So we, these are the predominantly the angles I want. I wanna put a text note on here as well that you need to grind that, but we'll do that on the top edge later. Let me just zoom to fit again. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in on this middle one. You, it's probably best to zoom in with these dimensions when the model is a little bit small like this. Let's uh, put a smart dimension on this face here. Put that back in there, smart dimension. I wanna click that point and go to that edge there. That should be 100. Okay, we need to put a center mark, sorry, a center, yeah, center mark, sorry, in that circle here. All right, and that should be a, five millimeter diameter when you machine that. If you get the taper right, that roughly should be five mil diameter there. Right, what are some of the other dimensions we're missing here? We need to show that we need to 10 mil and 10 mil up here. So from this edge to that edge will be 10. Back up here. We need to tell the reader to, to grind that. That will be an offhand grinding task. So this edge here, so grind 90 degrees. Okay, we can also bring in our drawing views. We've got to just type them in manually, unfortunately. So this will be a front view. Remember capital letters, please. We need isometric view up the top. Okay, let's see if we're missing anything. We'll just go back over to the drawing real quickly. Just have a quick look. 10, 10, 10. Okay, back up to our drawing. We need to show that it's 12 millimeter hex that we're using. So we can zoom in here, pick that corner, pick that corner, and up we go. Back into fit. Alrighty, we can put in here our insert our image and I taught you how to do that yesterday 3rd angle projection symbol and that there we have it remember to write in here all dimensions in millimeters unless otherwise stated and just align that down the bottom there and that pretty much does it, I think. We'll just double check one more time if I'm missing anything. This was actually drawn in A4 to fit it in the workbook, so by the looks of things. Okay, back into Fusion, and I think we're right. I think you could go into the workshop now to make that. You can see here that it's a 10 millimeter diameter on the side, on the ends, 10 mil in, 100 millimeters long. Uh, it's This angle here will be tapered turned to six degrees. The end point will be ground off hand to 90 degrees. 
12 mil hex and if you get it right it'll be 5 mil isometric view front top side view using nine nine line projection method done and dusted click save guys okay Alrighty, thanks for joining in. I'll see you on the next tutorial.